Welcome back. Let's take a look at how we can go and save my outfit into that hierarchy that I've made in the previous episode. If you haven't watched that, please do so. I'm assuming you have watched it. If you haven't, uh, it's going to be it's going to be bad because you need to know about how to make this hierarchy, why we need to make it. So just to recap, then, in order to save my three clothing items to the library here. We need that map directory that I've made in the previous episode. And here under my outfit, that's where I'm gonna go and save these things out, but not from the library this time because we don't have the functionality to make that happen. We have to go and select one clothing item and then I'm gonna want zoom in so that we can, that we have a bit of a thumbnail then as well. So with the shirt selected, I can go over to file, save as support asset, figure prop asset. And when I do that, I first get prompted for the location and that needs to be this hierarchy here. So it needs to be in my outfit. This is my folder. This is that map library here. It needs to be in people, Genesis 9, clothing, my vendor name, and then my outfit name. So this is where that is. This is where that's gonna appear. And I'm gonna call this one just Raglan shirt here. And then a somewhat scary window pops up that we need to tell that studio some metadata about our file. So first and foremost, under asset directory, we need to make sure this new directory is chosen. Otherwise it might end up in the wrong one, like your DAS library, which is what you don't want. If you intend to distribute this and share this with other people, it needs to go into the folder that we've made in the beginning, which is this one here, my outfit. And with that selected, you can pick your vendor name. That's fine. You can pick a product name. So in my case, it'll be my outfit. And the item name is indeed my Raglan shirt. So that is correct. The metadata here, set content type, is follow a wardrobe full body. That's not quite correct. We do have one for a shirt. That is in here. There we go. So wardrobe shirt, that's what it is. Set category, we can do that as well. If you tick that, then you can go and have that drop down here under default. We have its wardrobe. And then, whoops, no, no, sorry. <laughs> it's more than just wardrobe, come on. It's wardrobe, and then we have shirts once again. That's fine, we do that. Set compatibility base, this is an interesting one, and this has more to do with uh, smart content uh, that is about what DAS Studio sees this item as compatible with. If we don't set anything, then it will always assume, well, anything that's Genesis 9 base, it, this my item is gonna be compatible with. But we can be more specific, and that's important for things like material presets and all that, so that we see if I have a compatibility base that I define, then whatever I make will be compatible with only that product, not with all Genesis 9 products. So for example, if you make something that is part of a particular outfit, then you can set its compatibility base to something existing. My outfit is completely unique, so it doesn't have a compatibility base, so I need to set myself one, and that's done up here. So this is these are all the products that my system knows about, and I could say, hey, I've got an item that is compatible with the FG fast food joint, or with the FG detective office, or with the fat bike, or whatever, and then I can set my item to be compatible with an existing item. But but if you have something that you make from scratch, you can create yourself a compatibility base that's unique. That's up here, create new compatibility base. And I'm gonna call this one uh, my outfit perhaps. That's not very descriptive, but if you set that, it's in here, you can go and search for that. Now my outfit, here it is, my outfit. So I can go and select, select that. And all the items that I make are compatible with this compatibility base. That is all I need to do, hit accept. And notice DAS Studio is doing quite a bit of work and we'll have a look at what it actually did there. So it's classing this as a wardrobe item now and that's, that's perfect. And it means now I can go and double click it and then load it in from the library. Uh, let me see if I can show you what is actually done here. I go to the top of my hierarchy and we now see a data folder. We didn't have that before. Runtime we made ourselves, that's where our textures are in. People, this is something we've made ourselves to put these one-click options, these user-facing files in there, but data is something that isn't a user-facing file. So behind that, if I click that, I have Javis Lewis, my vendor name. Then I have my outfit, that's my, my outfit name. Then I have Raglan shirt. And then in here, I have this DSF file with a cryptic number and whatnot. And this is the actual geometry 
that's been saved out. So three megabytes, and then we have UV sets and we have morphs. So the morphs also in here, <laughs> a little bit deeper, thankfully we don't have to worry about this, but these are all the adjustment morphs, the corrective blend shapes that we've set up earlier that are part of our clothing and that are being loaded when this object is loaded in. Those are the ones that come in through the transfer utility. This is part of what transfer utility gave us. Some of these we've overwritten with the corrections in previous videos, if you remember. But this is how DestView saves those out, and this is what it's doing there when we do this. And as a result, if you now save a scene file, it's gonna be significantly smaller because all this information isn't part of this full outfit duff file anymore, but part of the library from where this data is being brought in. Alrighty, let's do this two more times, once for the boots and once for the pants. Boots next. Zoom them up, replace the thumbnail later. Boots, so same thing again. File, save as, support asset, figure prop asset. Let's do that, and we're going to call this one moldy boots. And same thing as before, we can go and pick my asset directory here, it's the correct one. My vendor name is correct, product name is not correct, but if we go, if we've just saved something, Dastu is gonna remember that, so I can just go and pick it from here. Item name, Moldy Boots, that's perfect. Follow up wardrobe footwear, that is correct, actually, we don't have to change that. Set category, let's do that. That is also wardrobe, and then we have footwear here, perfect. And then we have the compatibility base. That is the one that we've set up in the previous step. So my outfit is still here. That's perfect. I'm going to go and select that. And compatible, compatible with is also Genesis 9 base. That's perfect. So let's go and accept. That's how boots saved out. Once again, Dastu is doing quite a lot of work in the background. Sometimes more work than with other items. So these are very high res. I think that's why it's taking a bit longer. Okay, and last but not least, the puffy pants. Okay, here they are. Same thing as before, file, save as, support asset, figure, prop asset. Puffy pants, same thing here. Asset directory is correct, vendor name is correct, product name, we just need to pick from the list. Item name is correct, content type is wardrobe full body. No, that's not correct. We need to go and make that perhaps a pant, singular, wardrobe pant, that's it. Category, same thing, so open that, it's wardrobe, and then over here it's pants, that's uh, plural, don't know why. Set compatibility base, that is of course my outfit. If you make your own compatibility base, Dash Studio in the past had this bad habit of crashing so i strongly recommend just before you do that save your scene file just in case it happens you've got something to go back to this is all fine hit accept and that's my pants saved let me just go and save my scene file just so that we can see the size advantage that we're gaining here that is now in my working directory it's a different directory in dash scenes i have that i'm going to go and save this as a dash scene and this is going to be full outfit v7 just numerically put that on uh, see how fast that saved if i go back and check the size of that now that is now only 1.2 megabytes compared to 237 megabytes in the previous step. Do you remember that? That's why all that data has now been saved out into my library here, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want. Let's do a quick test and see if it actually worked. So I'm gonna go and take the shirt and the boots off. Boots, remember, if we make them invisible, it also means there's part of my foot geometry that gets hidden. So that also has been saved. So I've gone move the boots away, then my feet come back. I'm going to go move the puffy pants away as well. And let me go and load these in now from the library in my own directory. So that's in my outfit. These are the boots. Here are the boots. If I make them invisible, that foot geometry is hidden just like I want it to. Then we have the pants, and then you know they're a bit they're a bit baggy at the top here, and then we have the shirt. So this is all coming in exactly like I want. But right now I have to go and load this three times, and that's a little bit inconvenient. And there's also there's something else that we can do to make that a bit better, and that is to create a wearable preset. And that will describe all these items in one swoop so that people can go and double click that, and then everything gets loaded. That's part of my outfit.
We can do it directly from here, or we can also go to File, Save As, and this wearable preset. It's kind of easier to do it from here because this will already go into this directory. So wearable preset, and I'm going to call this one uh, my outfit. Let's. Just, we can also give it an exclamation mark, so then it appears at the top entry in the hierarchy here. That might make it a little bit easier. It has this option that comes up that lets you define other things about it. So currently I would just want my wearable preset to include all my clothing items and I don't want to compress it here. But you could also, if you're loading a particular shoe, you could also add a pose that will immediately include the high heel pose, for example. Or you can add a particular shaping preset if you needed that. Or you can add a particular material preset for these things. So I'm just going to go and leave it uh, on, on the defaults here, hit accept, and that will create myself that wearable preset. And look, no matter what it's called, if it has that exclamation mark at the top, it'll be at the very top here. So let me go and remove all the clothing items, select Genesis again, double click my outfit, and then all three objects are being loaded. And that's really convenient for the user. That's all I have about saving an outfit. I have a little bit of an addendum. I'll leave that for another video. It has to do with corrective blend shapes for full body morphs. Stay tuned for that.